Hello and welcome to Planted Nutrition. My name is Luke. I'm a nutritionist and in this video we're talking about the effect of coffee on our health. So this is something that really interests me because coffee is one of the most consumed beverages in the whole world. With hundreds of millions or even billions of people having it every day, sometimes multiple times a day. So it's something that either will affect us or someone that we know. And there's a lot of research out there on the health effects of coffee. Can it help us to maybe improve our health and reduce our risk of disease? Or is it not good for us? Is it toxic? Is it poisonous? As some people online claim. As usual, the answer lies probably somewhere in between. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the research on the health effects of coffee, address its effect on our health, and we're gonna talk about some common questions and concerns that I get as well. So what is coffee and why do we love it so much? So coffee is an interesting beverage because it not just contains caffeine that has the stimulating properties that a lot of us look for, but it also contains over 800 different other compounds that affect our health. The most prominent of those, as we've talked about, are caffeine, which I'm sure you would have heard of, but there's also polyphenols like chlorogenic acids. So polyphenols are plant compounds and they can interact with things like our gut health and our brain health. So this is a really interesting component of coffee to look into as well. And while we're talking about caffeine, let's just quickly touch on how it works because it's interesting to understand. So caffeine doesn't actually give us energy, but the way it works is it blocks the effects of a chemical in our brain called adenosine. And adenosine builds up over the day, it's lowest in the morning and it builds up as we're awake. And once it reaches a certain level, it starts to make us feel tired and sleepy. So you can imagine if we're blocking the effects of this, we're probably going to be feeling less tired and sleepy and more awake and alert. But the problem with this can be as well, if we are drinking coffee later in the day and having caffeine, it can also interfere with our sleep. But we're gonna to touch a bit more on that a bit later in the video. So let's get into the health effects of coffee. So firstly, taking a look at cardiometabolic health, the health of our heart and our metabolism, it's incredibly important. And these diseases are the diseases that are affecting most people, things like heart disease, stroke, diabetes. It's really important that we have a healthy cardiovascular system and a healthy metabolism. And can coffee help or hinder this? Well, a 2013 study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that habitual coffee consumption may reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and that's a really important risk factor for cardiovascular disease because as our blood pressure increases, our heart has to work harder to pump our blood, and it also reduced the risk of cardiovascular diseases like heart disease and stroke. And they even found that it reduced all-cause mortality, so that's dying from anything. And they concluded that consuming probably two to three cups of coffee a day is most beneficial. This is going to be different for everyone. There's no way that I could drink two to three cups of coffee a day because caffeine affects me really strongly and I'm going to talk about that a bit later as well if you find that it affects you strongly as well why that might be. Getting into number two our liver health. So our liver is an incredibly important organ in our body. A lot of people are interested in like detoxification and all of these things trying different diets and supplements to help but it's actually our liver that does all of this processing in our body that's our detoxification organ. Our liver health is incredibly important for our overall health and a 2014 systematic review so this is a study that's looking at a whole lot of different studies together and they can give us much stronger conclusions because they're not just looking at one piece of research in isolation but they're putting a whole lot of them together they found overall that coffee consumption is associated with improved liver function and lower risk of the most common liver diseases so some more good news there for the coffee drinkers among us and what about our brain health. So I don't know if any of you have relatives, grandparents or anyone with Alzheimer's or neurodegenerative diseases but they can be incredibly difficult and traumatic for those involved. It might be good to know that coffee is also associated with reduced risk of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and researchers think this is to do with 
the polyphenols and other compounds that are found in coffee that we talked about earlier. So you know those 800 different compounds, a lot of those can have really beneficial neuroprotective effects. So basically helping our brain to be healthier and also to remain healthier as we age. Also, if we take a look at cancer risk, for example, there's research showing that coffee can lower the risk of certain cancers, including colorectal and liver cancer. The researchers also talk about the same beneficial compounds having these effects. So all of these antioxidant polyphenol compounds, like the chlorogenic acids that we've talked about, these are all really beneficial, anti-inflammatory, and can impact all aspects of our health. And then looking at the research on mental health as well, there's also research showing that coffee consumptions associated with lower risk of depression and improved mood. And again, they reckon that it's these same compounds that are having these effects. So do you see a theme here? When it comes to our health and nutrition, it's generally not just one aspect of our health in isolation that's gonna be affected when we're eating something or taking in a drink that's beneficial for our health. Because our body works together as this whole unit, something that's good for our liver health, it's probably going to be good for our brain health. Something that's good for our cardiovascular health, it's probably going to be good for our metabolic health. So these are some really good keys to remember when making positive changes to our diet, that we're affecting our whole body when we're eating beneficial foods, or in this case, drinking beverages like coffee. And so I just wanted to address as well some of the most common concerns and questions that I get as a nutritionist from my clients about coffee. The first one being, does coffee affect our blood pressure. So we talked about this before, but blood pressure is a really important risk factor for cardiovascular disease, which is one of the biggest killers of people in modern society. So it's something we really want to pay attention to and be careful of. And it's true, coffee has a vasoconstrictive effect, meaning that it constricts our veins and arteries slightly, which temporarily increases our blood pressure. However, this is another important thing to mention when it comes to science and research, is that for most things we can find a way to make them sound scary and bad, and we can also find a way to make them sound really good. And so the key to remember here is not just looking at what does it do in isolation, it increases our blood pressure. So that means it's gonna increase our risk of heart disease, right? But as we've talked about earlier, when we look at what are called health outcomes, which is do coffee drinkers have higher rates of cardiovascular disease? Actually, no, they have lower rates of cardiovascular disease. So even though it has this effect of temporarily increasing our blood pressure, it doesn't necessarily impact our risk in the long term. Although if you do have high blood pressure and you're working with your doctor or a health professional, that's something that you might wanna to talk to them about as well. Number two, is coffee good for weight loss? So while coffee might increase our metabolism and make us feel a bit more energetic, and it can also potentially help a little bit with appetite suppression, these effects are quite modest, so it's generally not a really good long-term strategy to help with weight loss. And if you want some more tips for weight loss, you can check out my video on that in an annotation here, because I've got a whole video on the top science-backed tips for weight loss. Number three, how does coffee affect our digestion? So those of you who drink coffee, you probably know, often after drinking a cup, we might need to go to the bathroom. So it can have this effect on speeding up our gut motility, basically, <laughs> meaning that we need to go to the toilet after drinking it. But it can also help increase the production of stomach acid, which might help some people with their digestion. However, maybe for people with acid reflux or other gastrointestinal issues like IBS, Crohn's disease, it's gonna differ between people. So you really need to pay attention to your body. If you feel like it's making things worse for you, it might not be a good idea to continue. But that's also something that you could talk about with your nutritionist, dietitian, or other health professional that you're working with. Number four is about caffeine and how it affects our sleep. And yes, caffeine can affect our sleep as we've talked about earlier because it blocks the effect of adenosine, which is one of the important chemicals of making us feel tired and sleepy. And coffee has what's called like a half life of about six hours. So it takes our body about six hours to remove half of the caffeine from a cup of coffee. So after 12 hours, we might be down to about a quarter, so it goes down by half each every six hours. So generally, I would recommend if you are drinking caffeinated coffee to have it before midday. And if it is affecting your sleep or if improving your sleep is one of your goals, you want to avoid it 
at least six hours before sleeping, but ideally 12 hours or longer before sleeping because it has this really long tail of the effects. And there may also be genetic differences with how people metabolize caffeine. Some people might metabolize it quicker than others and some people might be able to have a lot more coffee or people like me that cannot metabolize coffee well that when I have too much, I just feel terrible. Even though I love coffee, I love the taste and I really enjoy drinking it, I have to be really careful with how much caffeine that I consume because it really affects me and how I feel. It can make me feel anxious, not good. So then getting into the next question, is decaffeinated coffee healthier number five? So decaffeinated coffee still contains a lot of these other 800 different beneficial compounds that coffee has, but just with much less caffeine. So with decaffeinated coffee, there's still a little bit of caffeine, but it's pretty negligible. So this is a good option for people like me who are more sensitive to caffeine. So I find maybe I can mostly have a decaf. I mix in a little bit of caffeinated coffee if I'm drinking coffee and I find that to be okay. But if I go full caffeinated coffee, boom, I'm not feeling good. There's also other things like L-theanine, which you could potentially take with coffee. L-theanine is an amino acid found in green tea and it kind of can inhibit some of those negative effects of caffeine like anxiety, jitters, and things like that. So that's something you could look into as well. Or if coffee doesn't agree with you at all, you could go for something like matcha green tea, which also has caffeine a bit less, but it also has L-theanine naturally in it. So you might find that you can tolerate that a bit better. If you're still wanting that pick-me-up energy, but you struggle with caffeine and with coffee. And just to finish that up with decaf coffee, there's even research showing that a lot of these same health benefits are available to people that drink decaffeinated coffee as well. Like improved liver function, improved cardiovascular health, reduced risk of neurodegenerative diseases, improved mental health. And again, that's probably because of the polyphenols and things like chlorogenic acids and other antioxidants. <laughs> and so to tie it all together, coffee is a very popular beverage and it has a plethora of health benefits from improved cardiometabolic health to reduce the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, improved mental health, reduce risk of certain cancers, improved liver and metabolic health. It's also essential to consume in moderation and it's important to be aware of the potential risks and also the effects that it can have on things like our sleep because our sleep is incredibly important for our overall health. If you struggle with coffee, decaffeinated coffee is a good alternative that can still give you a lot of those benefits. But to put it all together, if you drink coffee and you love it, you don't have to stop. Don't be afraid of these fear-mongering things that you might see online. When we look at the scientific research on coffee, not what someone's saying on Instagram or TikTok, the scientific research, <laughs> looking at humans, following them over time, rigorously studying the effects of coffee, we see it's generally positive for our health. However, if you don't like coffee and it doesn't make you feel good, you are by no means obliged to drink it. There's plenty of other beneficial things that you can try, like matcha green tea, for example. I hope this video has helped you to clarify some confusion around coffee. And if you are struggling with nutrition and you need more support, check out my website linked in the description where I'm offering free 30 minute health consultations. I would love to support you if that's something that you need. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like as it really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and I'm really trying to grow this channel and reach more people and feel free to subscribe if you would like to see more from me as well. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one and until then, stay healthy my friends.